My name is Greg Davis, and I would like to welcome to you to the CBS ArcSafe webinar for remote ranking of the GE MagnaBlast series and families of circuit breakers. We hope you and all your employees are staying safe out there. We would also like to say thank you to our affiliates in group circuit breaker sales who have a vast inventory, almost half a million products with everything from vacuum, SF6, molded case and air circuit breakers staged across the nation to help you out with your circuit breaker needs. Retrofits, retrofills, refurbishments, that's what they're there to help you with. The circuit breaker sales uh, inventory is vast and deep. You want to go movie? We at Circuit Breaker Sales CBS ArcSafe division work on the remote racking and the remote switching components to keep operators and electricians safe in their operational environment. In the NFPE or the NFP, NFPA 70E hierarchy, we fall into the engineering controls for taking care of people. We are two steps above PPE. With that in mind, we have the first thing to deal with on a circuit breaker is going to be remote switching. So let's say you've got a Magna Blast breaker. Well, gee whiz, do I want to come up here and go trip like this myself, standing right in front of the cubicle? I can tell you from personal experience in visiting many power plants within the United States, the highest arc flash hazard boundary I've seen on a Magna Blast cubicle is 386 feet. There may be higher. With that, we have our CSO1, and the thing to understand is the, the Magna Blast family of breakers, while we haven't opened the door yet, comes in many varieties. It, because these breakers were made from the mid-1940s up to today. You had a paddle defeat, and then what most people will have is the M26 or M36, either American or Canadian versions of the switch gear. So, you may not know until you open the door what lies behind the door, and we can help you out with those if you just send us some basic pictures at info at cbsarcsafe.com or you give us a toll-free call at 1-877-472-3389. But as I mentioned, the first thing we want to do is trip this breaker. So instead of standing right in front of it, we're going to use our CSO1 to do this. Now, I can be about 100 feet away when I remotely switch this breaker. I have to hit the enable button, and then I'm going to hit my trip button, and it's going to take care of tripping that circuit breaker. Now, let's say you've got a problem with your control switch, and you look at the front of the breaker and you see, gee whiz, now this breaker is actually open, so it's not going to matter, but Let's say that the breaker's still closed. I called a guy in Minnesota, no, no, North Dakota one time, and he was talking with me. On a peaker station, they had one where they had to, you know, use the bang stick. Now, my bang stick is just a, a broom handle for demonstrations today, but would you rather be in a suit going like this, or would you rather be able to be 25 to 30 feet away with an RSA 2HD or maybe 100 meters away with it using the wireless option instead. So with this, I can quickly mount with our switchable magnets, this right above the trip, turn this on, go to radio remote, and now I can remotely trip the Magna Blast breaker. Now with it tripped, we can safely operate the breaker at this point 
in terms of remote racking to begin the operation of removing it from the connected and taking it to the disconnected position. We have two options at CBS ArcSafe for remote racking of the GE Magnablast family of circuit breakers if you're in the M26, M36 cubicles with clip-in motor mounts. And just so everybody knows, I'm going to show this real quick. We make replacement motor mounts. So these cubicles have some where the motors are bolted in and we make one that we fabricate locally which meets the GE cubicle specification that you can with just four bolts removed replace the factory bolt-in motor mount with a clip-in motor mount so that it now becomes adaptable to our family of remote racking systems. The GE breaker this is we're going to replace the GE remote racking motor with ours it's got an umbilical cord and it's got a clip up here for holding down the uh, latch at the front which puts control power to the micro switches and one of the things you're going to notice as we go through this you're going to see a micro switch indication on the CCM monitor telling you up and down position of the circuit breaker these old switches were mer mercury switches if you have to replace any of those, the people up at Gainesville and our other affiliates have the non-mercury switches to replace those with just for your information. I've got the motor secured right now. Some of the other options you're going to notice is I'm going to put a tilt switch on here to begin with. And the tilt switch would notify the operator through an alarm on the console that the breaker is rotated 10 degrees in either front, back, left, or right position. So in case you have a gear that slipped in the cubicle and you're standing away from it, all of a sudden you start hearing a grinding noise, then you get the tilt alarm also at the same time you know that you've had a breaker that slipped and has a gear problem and you'll want to stop the racking operation and reverse it and remove the breaker from the cubicle. We design it so that it does not stop automatically when the silt switch alarms because we want the operator to at all times maintain control of the remote racking operation. With the GE Magnablast cubicles you can have five different control voltages 48 DC, 120 AC 120 DC, 240 AC, 240 DC. And this remote racking system, the RS3MB2, with the um, supervisory link, is made to work with all of those so you don't have to try and pre select what type of control power you have in your cubicle. It will read the, the cubicle. Now, the three cords that I'm connecting, you will need 120. Um, AC power to operate the system, but the three cords are for three different things. The first one is here, this is a tilt switch. The second one here, which I'm connecting, is the motor. This comes in a standard 30 foot cable set. If you want wireless control, we'll send a 12 foot cable set, and the wireless control will take you out to 150 feet away from the circuit breaker. And this provides the power to the motor itself right here. The other one, which I plugged in first, is actually the, it's reading the control power and position of the circuit breaker from the cubicle's micro switches. Before you had this, if you were doing this manually, you'd have either had a long crank handle to do this with, or if you had the motor in the cubicle, you'd have been standing over here to the side with most likely your left arm exposed. Well, the good news is you can be away from the breaker now. Now when we turn this on, you're going to notice on the display, we've got type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is the one where the switch is on the motor for elevating and lowering the breaker. 
The type two is the one where you have a switch in the cubicle itself for lowering and raising. And so you have to be looking at this to go, okay, do I have type one or I have type two? We, in this case, have type one. When we turn this on, you're gonna see initially that our tilt switch is alarming and it wants us to reset it because it's just been told, hey, I got power on. And so now it says I'm at level. And that's its starting point in this operation. And if I use the local and I hit remove, because we're in the connect position, it's gonna lower it down. Now on the display, you saw initially there was a dot in the up position and one now in the down position. That's the lower cubicle switch, limit switch in the cubicle, telling you that the breaker's in the down position. We're gonna to go to radio remote now and we're gonna raise it back up. I'm gonna step over to the other side of the screen so you don't see me operating anything uh, next to the RS3MB2 itself and we're gonna assume that I'm uh, 100 feet away and we're gonna hit the install button now. And yeah, so real quickly, here are your limit switches which are determining the position of the breaker as it travels up and down right here. There's one other limit switch which you can't see which is buried in here that when you move the connection mechanism, it sends control power to these for determining the up and down position. So there's actually a total of three of those in the system. And this is the application-specific system? Now this is just made for the GE Magna Blast in either M26 or M36 switchgear with clip-in motor mounts. And the difference basically between the Canadian version and the American version is what the base of the motor clips onto for securing it, the motor, into the cubicle. So um, that was just how they were manufactured. We've only seen, I think, two cases of Canadian motor mounts here in the United States. We've seen several cases as you would be expected on the Canadian M26, M36 breakers up in Canada. So now we would disconnect this from everything. I'll start with the motor first. Remove the control power up here and remove our tilt switch. And you'll see over on the display that just because I moved the tilt switch that the display has actually gone active with the tilt switch saying that this is uh, gone out of level. So we'll just hit the reset button there and I'm going to move my cables out of the way. So when you deal with the remote racking systems, if you have more than just the GE Magnablast type of breaker, you need something like our RS1, the universal system, which will do over 240 different types of rotary breakers that we've evaluated from around the world. Real quickly, if you had the, the difference between the tool we're going to use today and the one that would be used, if you had the paddle defeat, this is the tool we use because this collar pushes against the paddle and holds it up so that the breaker in the paddle defeat or the first generation of Magna Blast breakers can be racked. But now we're going to play with our M26, M36 version. And the first thing we're going to put in is a geared adapter to replace the motor. because we have to be able to secure the linkage and hold it in the down position so that the operation can be performed. And you'll see that we have the same ability to clamp down on the linkage for the control linkage to make sure that it stays engaged and the micro switches stay engaged in the racking process and you'll see that as we hook up the system.
And now we've got the charging arm down. We've got our motor our replacement, which is our gearbox in place. And now we'll move the RS1 over. The RS1, as I mentioned, is a universal system that can do over 240 different types of rotary racking mechanisms that we've looked at around the world. We have the same ability to read the control power in the cubicle with our supervisory link here. And we also have a tilt switch for the RS1 as an option so that you can monitor that as you're stepping back and doing this with the RS1. If you're operating the RS1 on battery power because you're moving a breaker up and down, you may get seven to 10 operations out of it in the Magnablast family. If you're operating it plugged in, you can do this all day. And what I've done is, the things that I've done is I first placed the tilt switch in position and I've zeroed out the tilt switch. I've hooked up our supervisory link. I've now turned the RS1 on. I've turned our brake release off. And it is already, you can't see this in the video, but you can see on my display here that I've got the up position on the indicator here for the uh, remote racking. Okay, so now I'm gonna push it forward. Because it's a stationary racking mechanism, I'm going to simply lock down the foot latches and I will plug the unit in at this time for operation. Now, we can do this locally with the pendant control from up to about 30 feet, 30, 35 feet away, or we can also do it remotely and we're going to do one operation each direction with handheld and one with the uh, that wireless remote here. So we're on pendant now. I've got the up position indicated. And so now at this point, I just need to depress the down and it's going to lower the breaker. The RS1 is racking at a speed slightly higher than what you or I would do as a human being doing this. Now that's about 96 turns on the screw to raise or lower this circuit breaker. And the limit switch has cut off the operation of the RS1 at this point. For the raise, we'll simply hit the install button one time. And now it's starting to elevate itself back up. This is going to be faster than what you or I as a human could do. It's not as fast as the RS3 MB2, but it's still much faster than what you or I would be doing as a human being. Now, I'm going to switch it over to radio control. I'm going to initiate the radio sequence here, turning it on. So I have control here from just the handheld radio remote. If I were trying to operate it from here, none of the functions on here would work while I have the radio remote set up and ready to go. So it's told me right now it's got supervisor link installed and it's in the up position. Okay? And while this breaker is racking down, I will actually just move the tilt switch so you can see what happens when that happens. We're going to hit the remove button one time. 
and you're going to notice this blue alarm light go on when I tilt the tilt switch here. And it would stay in the alarm position. If I'm removing the breaker, I would just want to keep removing it if I've had the tilt happen because it's got to come down. And again, for install, just one button pressed right here. And that's the completion of the racking operation. We'd like to open the webinar up for questions at this time. So if you have some, please uh, forward them and uh, we will work to answer them. Again, the RS1 is the universal system that can do over 240 different types of rotary breakers. And the RS3 MB2 is made for the M26 and M36 cubicles with the clip-in motor mounts only. Okay, just a quick reminder for everybody, if you have questions, you can call us at 1-877-472-3389, or you can send us an email at info at cbsarcsafe.com. We would like to thank Gainesville and all of our other Circuit Breaker sales affiliates because they are the people who help provide us the switchgear to do the development, testing, and ship products to our customers to verify and make sure that we're getting the right things to the right customer to help them out. You can also send other questions to info at cbsales.com and that will get to our Circuit Breaker sales affiliates. And you can look us up on the web also at www.cbsarcsafe.com.